Our next guest is a talented actress and comedian known from shows like Parks and Recreation and films like Obvious Child. The paperback edition of her book, Little Weirds, is available now. Please welcome back to the show our friend Jenny Slate. Hi, Jenny! Hi, Seth! It's so lovely to see you. It's been about a year uh, since we've crossed paths. It's been about nine months uh, since the world shut down. How, uh, how have your last nine months been? Whoa. Well, let me tell you. On night one of the lockdown, we had a really like romantic night of being together, um, real sweet with my fiance. And then I did what everyone else did. I kind of like hunkered down and um, baked a lot of bread. But I just want to say, I think, I think I might have baked like too much bread or eaten too much bread. You tell me, Seth, but I think you can't really, yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah. It's, that's a lot of carbs. It's, it's, a, it's different. <laughs> it's like different. Um, it feels, I feel different. Um, <laughs> um, how have the exact last nine months been? They've oh been um, real pregnant for me. <laughs> that's amazing. Now, I will say. Uh, you know, my wife, Alexia, said, like, that people who timed it like you, she feels like crushed the timing. Like, because you basically had to hunker down anyway. Have you felt like, oh, this was a fortuitous time to do this? You know, in a way, first of all, it's very nice to have, like, something that is um, incredibly positive during a time that's, like, hard and sad. Um, it's nice to have, like, a little secret treasure. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, I've basically been... Um, just chilling out, doing exactly what I wanted to do, not having to see anyone or figure out like how to gracefully wear pants. Um, I haven't worn pants in many moons, you know? Um, and, and also like spending an hour of my day doing, doing uh, like a hypnobirthing meditation every day. So I'm very chill. Got you. So you found your way even during a pandemic to find the time to do the sort of birthing class stuff. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I mean, it's so, everything is weird. Like, this isn't what I thought I would be doing. But, like, one thing I do, I do, I do all the, the, the birth prep stuff, and I really like it. I'm also, like, many of my friends will remind me that I am the number one person who would join a cult, like, without even having to be pressured. <laughs> like, I love chill vibes, and I like it when someone seems like they have the answer. But I've been listening to this doctor who, I think she's from India, but has lived in England for a while. That's what I'm getting from her accent. And I listen to her every day, and she says things like, Take your attention to your liver, kidneys, and colon. <laughs> colon. Colon. That means colon. Yeah. You, uh, have you guys been uh, on the East Coast uh, during this time? Yeah, we've been in Massachusetts in a beautiful, tiny little seaside town where we live. Um, and just my luck... I moved in with my fiance, and um, of course, he lives in a, like a very old house that is, I think, most certainly haunted and has an actual uh, pet cemetery. A real pet cemetery? Yeah. Like based yeah. on the fact that over the years, this house has had that many uh, befallen pets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, they didn't get murdered. I think I think they all kind of went their way, and and then they died, and then they buried them, but. Um, but it has been in, in my fiance Ben's family for um, like since the 30s, I think. So it's, you know, like 90 years of pets. And um, it's like, they're all little, little fancy guys like Cocker Spaniels and stuff. And um, at the start of the pandemic, when I was like just newly pregnant, I started to go out and visit the pet cemetery every day. And um, Ben told me that like, I started saying things like, I'm just going to go outside and visit the pets. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it's like, it's like, that's like how a scary movie starts. Yeah. You know, like a pregnant lady is like, my pets, my <laughs> precious, precious pets. <laughs> you, um, you've thrived as an artist uh, during this time. 
Uh, I did not know uh, your sort of visual skills. Um, I guess yeah. this was to like, you had a chalkboard and this was like to mark the days? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. So what this is, is, um, is that I felt like at the start of the pandemic, it's like hard to keep track of the days after a while. If you don't, if you're like kind of just in your house and you don't have, you're like an actor who has no set to go to. So I started to write the days and draw a picture and then that devolved into this, um, or evolved into this cartoon that is about our new dog that we adopted um, and a brontosaurus who yeah. loves her. So on Thursday, uh, for those who can't read, uh, the brontosaurus mm -hmm. saying, Sally, I love you, do you love me? And Sally's agreeing and saying, I love you. Yeah. Uh, and then on, fr on Friday, uh, yeah. do you want to go on a trip with me, right? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the following Monday, it's now, it's Lundy. It's Lundy, <laughs> and they're in, uh, they're in Paris. It's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they traveled over the weekend, and I guess I, I didn't take any pictures of what happened on the weekend, but there was one of Sally packing a suitcase filled with bones <laughs> and, like, saying, like, give me some hints. I don't know what to pack. Um, <laughs> And then Sunday was them on like a very crudely drawn, it was like a bicycle, I guess. And, and Ben is very charitable towards me and I'm a terrible visual artist. He's a really good one. And, but he like congratulates me every day and tells me it's like, they're really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> very, uh, that is very lovely of him. Um, your book is very, very good. Um, we've talked about it before and now it's in paperback. Uh, what is it like to revisit a book that is really funny but also really vulnerable in this time that I think has been really uh, vulnerable for a lot of people, particularly those who might pick it up and read it? Yeah, I mean, it, it is a nice, it's actually, I mean, <laughs> it's a plug, but, but it is a nice book to read now um, because I wrote it during a time when I was kind of like trying to work through um, sad feelings and uh, trying to figure out how to be alone in a way that didn't feel scary or like a punishment. And then we've sort of all had to be alone in one way or another uh, for so many months now. Um, and I think it's, it, it's sometimes just like hard to find a little bit of positivity in that. But, um, but I think the, the book, it's all these little pieces about my feelings during those time. But I think, I think kind of anyone could read them and, and find something to, to get for themselves, but it's it's just that when I finish the book, the last chapter is sort of like, and I'm a woman alone, and I will be alone now. And then like a month later, I fell in love, and <laughs> now I'm pregnant. <laughs> it's not, it's a, it's a happy ending. I just didn't expect it to be so happy and so uh, soon. Well, it is, uh, we're so happy uh, that it is that ending for you. Uh, you more uh, than deserve it. And it's always just such a delight to see you, Jenny. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Seth. It's nice to be here.